In this section, we're going to discuss expense reports. And there are very few businesses that do not have them. And what is an expense report? Basically, it is a form that is filled out by an employee for expenses they have incurred on behalf of the business and that they can get reimbursed for. So it's expenses they have spent their own money on that they will get reimbursed for to pay their bills and to cover them for their expenses they have made personally on behalf of the company. And it goes without saying these have to be legitimate charges. What I have to stress is you want to make sure that you only accept original documents for backup. You do not want to take Xerox copies. Why is this? Well, somebody can make copies of receipts and place them in invoices to get reimbursed several times over. So having authentic original documentation helps ensure the legitimacy of expense report reimbursement. You also want to make sure that each expense report is approved by the appropriate manager. And this person is going to be responsible for this individual expense report, that these expenses are legitimate and that the purpose of the trip has been approved. Do not enter any expense report that is not approved. So make sure it has been signed by the appropriate management. Here is a typical expense report and you'll see the mileage rate is 67 cents. Most people accept the mileage rate which is the wear and tear on the car that you could legitimately write off and be compensated for. Usually people match this with what the IRS has as an acceptable value for mileage reimbursement. Let's just say it is at the moment 55 cents. You may want to keep this at 55 cents. And you'll see we have a place for miles driven. Let's just say he drove 125 miles with his own car. And you'll see reimbursement would be $68.75. Now this includes gas and wear and tear on his own car. You would not even allow reimbursement for gas. This is including all of that expense, wear and tear and fuel. And you'll see the expense report is broken down by day and has totals. And what you may also want to have done for your expense report is have a separate column for what expense codes should be hit for these particular expenses so that when it is entered into the system for payment you can easily code it without have, having to reference the chart of accounts. So first of all make sure that the expense report is signed off by the appropriate person, that it contains original receipts for the expenses, and you may want to have a policy of everything over $20 having to have to have a receipt, that it will not, the, the amount will not be reimbursed if there is no receipt over $20. Also, your company may have a policy where it does not pay for food if people stay late. And if you see that people are trying to get reimbursed for buying food after staying late, you may want to question it. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rule, but you may want to question the manager. Maybe the manager has gotten permission from the CFO to allow this person to be compensated for their meals after staying late. So make sure you have the original receipts, all the amounts total properly, and it is approved. More and more accounting packages are having expense reports linked into the accounting package itself. But remember, regardless of if the person enters the expense report through a computer 
and it goes through the approval process via the computer, they must also hand in the original receipts and documentation as well. You want to have that on file. Another thing, if you are entering the expense report to be paid to the employee, say in QuickBooks, what you want to make sure is at the vendor setup for your employee to make sure that the person is not set up to be eligible for a 1099 because if this is selected then the IRS will receive information in terms of expenditure but that will be deemed as revenue by the IRS and it shouldn't be as this person is just being reimbursed for money he has put out in advance for the company's benefit. So make sure that if you are paying through a vendor screen in your accounting package, whatever it is, make sure the employee is not set up as a 1099 so they will not have to record this as income. You can then fill out a vendor form much like a typical vendor for the employee reimbursement and you can see you could hit meals and what have you and this is why you want to have the expense codes on the expense report for easy coding and once you enter everything you could basically print up the checks as if you're cutting a check for a vendor what you may also want to have put in place is to have double approval if the expense report reaches a certain amount. Let's just say the expense report is for over $2,000. Maybe for all expense reports over $2,000 it requires two approval signatures. But this is pretty much what an expense report entails.